the vlogmas day 12. Don't don't worry about my hair, okay? It's it's throwing, but I'm about to do it because I'm tired of pushing it back. Yo! Did y'all see Lucky his girl alive? Let me let you know. This is straight up. Spoiler alert, y'all. It's gonna be a spoiler alert. Y'all, so we drinking uh Cooper Hawks sweet bread. This is like my I don't even really drink these two when I go there. But y'all, okay, so the luckiest girl alive, it's about a girl who in high school she was in a it was like a mass shooting, a school shooting, and it happened when she was like in like high school. She went to like a private high school, and so it happened when she was in high school, y'all. OMG, when I tell y'all, the movie was deep. So the movie it was it was really really about how easily women when we go through being raped she was raped girl went to a party she got drunk and she got raped she got she really got she got by three guys so the first guy y'all know he was doing fellatio on her then the second guy came and who was like supposed to be like her boyfriend and he raped her she was very inebriated the third guy daryl whatever the last dude name you know i do this i'll be forgetting the names he raped her raped her like she was she was fighting him off for everything so y'all she went through all of that she didn't want to say nothing to nobody because she didn't think nobody was going to believe her and so when all of the information came out she told her mother and her mother was like oh you a slut when i tell you that pissed me off beyond belief because the whole reason why the girl didn't want to say nothing is because she really felt like wasn't nobody gonna believe her and so when she finally said something the one person who you always want to believe you is your mother and her mother flat out did not believe her and called her a slut and all of that was like basically like you a hoe you you didn't get raped you slept with them guys because you was a hoe but sis did get raped now the whole premise of the movie like they were saying do you feel like she was a part of it or do you feel like she was a victim she was 100 percent a victim she was 100% a victim. So she went through her whole life holding this information in because she knew that wasn't nobody going to believe her. So the dude, what was his name? Darren, Daryl. I don't know. Let me see real quick. Hold up. What was his name? Dean. That was his name. Dean. Dean and his ass beat. So Dean was the one that, Dean was the one that like, brutally raped her they all took advantage of her but dean was the one that like brutally raped her then this motherfucker had the nerve to when it was all over when he got older this motherfucker like i wanted to get ahead of the story so he went loud on the girl said that she didn't that um she he didn't rape her that she was basically being a hoe and she was helping the shooters kill everybody so he came out with this whole sensationalized story. This girl done lived her whole life scared to tell her truth because she didn't think nobody was going to believe her. This is a, a straight up case of when somebody has more power and more money, like when a family has more power and more money than the other person, it's almost like it kind of outweighed the other. Just like that dude, that swimmer dude, I forgot his name because we ain't giving him no clout. It's like that where they try to basically... Make it seem like, okay, well, you asked. He tried to make it seem like, okay, you asked for this. And so that's that's why it happened. And tried to make it seem like instead of her being a victim, like she was the one who helped. All because his ass got shot and he was in a wheelchair. Now, rewinded, Dan was in the school fucking with everybody. Fucking with everybody. What, what was that boy's name? So it started when, was it Liam? I don't know. It was one of them. It was one of them. So one of the boys, um, he went to like the woods or something like that. I don't really remember y'all. My bad. He went someplace. They he thought that Dane and them was his friend. So they went out there and and two of Dane's friends pinned him down and Dane took a shit on his chest. Like what kind of what? Who does that? Like Dane was Dane was very deviant. And so the dude didn't say nothing about it because, again, he was like, you know, they ain't got power. They're not going to believe me. And who the hell want to go and tell somebody, like, a student had two other of his friends pin me down in the fucking woods and took a shit on my chest. Like, nobody is really going to try to come out with that information. So he held it in. So the dude who was friends with Anna or Tiffany and the other dude, his name was, where his picture at? 
Yeah, I know I'm not good with it. His he was Arthur in the uh in the in the thing. When I tell you this movie had me so it's very triggering. And I ain't never been through none of this, but I just know how society really will go against the girl to favor the guy, especially if the guy is somebody who they deem to be of more importance than the girl. Like she got into the she got into the private school on a scholarship that was only made available to like lower income families. And so she got the scholarship and she was able to go to this prestigious um, private school. So Arthur was the one that was pushing both of them to tell they like he like, man, listen. He he did this to this guy, and then he he legit raped you. He raped you, got you so scared to say anything. Now, what was crazy was the dude who, because I got to go back to this. The dude who was, like, supposed to be her boyfriend, I believe it was either Liam or Peyton. I don't know. These motherfuckers, they, they look alike in these pictures. Um, the backgrounds are similar. But they was all, like, after the party. First of all, they got shit faced. I don't know what it is about, um... These private school kids, when their families go out of town and they throw like these big dumbass parties, and I'm like, y'all in high school. But she was like a freshman. She was like like a freshman sophomore. She, how, why would you give permission to go to a goddamn house party? That's the question. That's the real question. So they all went to this house party. She got super drunk. But when the dudes took advantage of her, it, when the dudes raped her, that first dude. I guess you would call it, um, I don't even know what that would be classified as. I guess it would still be right because she was unconscious, but he was giving her head and she was just like, she was inebriated. The girl had a head on the side of the goddamn toilet. Nobody voluntarily gets head with their head on the side of a toilet. Nobody, nobody fucking does that. I refuse to believe it. So the first dude was just giving her head for like a super long time, but the other two dudes raped her. And so then the one dude who raped her first he thinking that she's just like fighting him like the way he was behaving was he didn't act she was really like inebriated so they made the same like she was just kind of like pushing him off or whatever but it wasn't like aggressive like with Dean and so he's like kissing her hand and shit like that because he thinking like oh she's just being feisty and no motherfucker she don't want you on her but after the party they was all acting like wasn't none wasn't none wrong the dude who was her boyfriend was still being her boyfriend and all of that stuff and he knew that Dean raped her like, he knew that Dane, Dane had sex with her. Even, I don't know if he knew right off the bat that Dane raped her, but he knew that Dane smashed. And they was all just, at the after the party, they was all just, like, chilling. And all the girls in the school was like, oh, my God, Ani, because her name was Tiffany, but everybody called her Ani. They like, oh, my God, Ani's such a slut. She slept with blah, 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 and Dane. She did all this. And Ani's like, no, you know, these motherfuckers raped me. But because she was like, I don't want to say nothing. She ain't say nothing. So this girl is a grown ass woman. She's with who oh, I got damn boyfriend. Her fiance. She's with her fiance now. Luke. She's with Luke. Luke come from money. Luke doing good. Luke gave her a big fat ass heirloom ring. And she's just like, you know, my life should be perfect. I should be like the luckiest girl alive, but I'm dealing with all of this shit on the inside and I don't want to tell nobody about it. So that Dan is like. Dean come out, the, the motherfucking, uh, so Dean got shot, Dean lived, all of the, the other two boys who took advantage of her, they got, they got killed, so, Luke, what the fuck is his name, Arthur, and the other dude, I want to say his name was, I want to say it was Liam, I don't know though, I'm looking at these pictures, I can't, I can't really remember, I'm gonna keep it a thousand, but, the dude that was friends with Arthur and Ani, him and Arthur went in and, and shot up the motherfucking school. They they shot up the whole motherfucking school, but they specifically looked for these these motherfuckers and they killed them. So they shooting up the school. They shooting like they really shooting like random people, but they really looking for those two people. So they finally shot them and killed them and all of that stuff. And so the dude who got shit on, he went specifically to that person. And so when he go in the room, he's like, you know, Ani, whatever, basically telling her like, I'm not even here for you. And and Ani friend, he's like, I'm not even here for y'all. I'm here for for this motherfucker right here, the one who the one who shit on my chest in the motherfucking woods because you thought it was sweet and it's really not because now i'm back with this ak for your ass so he shot him in the, in the motherfucking neck y'all in the neck and let him sit there and suffocate on his own motherfucking blood so ani run out 
they trying to help him and all that stuff. And I be like, man, fuck him. We got to go. So they leave out. And so when they running out, they running out with one of the other dudes that took advantage of her. And so the dude is one of the shooters that's behind her, behind the dude running. And so Ani go out the door. She don't leave the door open for him. And they like, you didn't leave the door open for him. And like, she go and finally do a damn interview. And they're like, you didn't leave the door open for him. She's like, no. I didn't leave the door open for me. Motherfucker, it's a goddamn school shooter. You think I'm finna be like, let me help everybody? No, bitch. It's all for one. All for me. And me for me. I'm trying to get me the fuck up out of here. I'm not interested in trying to save other motherfuckers. She had her little female friend and she was trying to get them out of there because she's like, okay, these motherfuckers ain't here for me. So the girl, so like she let the door shut and his ass got killed because why the fuck would she help out the motherfucker who raped her? Why would she do that? Nobody knew this at this point, but why would she do that? So she's like, man, fuck you. You finna get shot the fuck up because you should never did what you did. So they run down her, her little female friend. What's what's the girl name? I don't even know if they got a picture of her on here, y'all. I'm trying to hurry up and get the, When I tell you this shit had me heated. Olivia. I believe that's what that was her, what her name was. Olivia. So Manju, she she went to like Andrew. We gonna, we gonna back it up a little bit. So Andrew was one of her teachers. She went to Andrew and told Andrew was, what the fuck was going on. Andrew like, you need to talk to the Dane. So Andrew took her to the Dane and she basically like backtracked all her shit because she was scared. And then Andrew ended up getting fired behind that shit because they like, you should have never took her to, her to your house. And she's like, he's like, listen, the motherfucking girl came in the goddamn store. She ran into a damn liquor store because she ran out the house trying to get free from their asses. She ran into a motherfucking liquor store, uh, or like some type of like convenience store since they had no shoes on or nothing and so he like what the fuck so he take her to the crib so she he finally get her to talk to the dean and she like i don't want to talk to the dean so they fucking fire andrew she ended up meeting up with him later at like a like weird ass meeting like it's a it's a small world type shit but anywho let me go back to the thing so the girls um ani and olivia they run down to the cafeteria because they trying to get the fuck up out of there so when they run out of the cafeteria arthur comes in now we don't even know arthur is a part of this shit we don't even know that arthur is a part of the motherfucker shooting at first we just thought it was that one boy the boy that got shitted on. I want to say his name was Liam, but I don't really remember. I just saw this movie today, y'all, and the shit just floored me. So, Arthur come in. Arthur got another motherfucking AK-47. I don't know where these motherfucking kids get these AK-47 for. I still be, I still be at all when I hear about these goddamn high school, grammar school kids with, getting their hands on AK-47s. That shit is crazy to me. So, Arthur come in with another AK-47. Dana's is on the ground at this point because Dana already got shot by the other damn dude other dude just shot his ass left, left his ass there so arthur so okay before ani and them ran up out the library when uh, the other dude came in and shot the other dude that was fucking with her like one of the three dudes that was fucking with uh ani ani grabbed a knife out of like some she found a motherfucking knife somehow i forgot how she found that motherfucking knife but she was like rummaging through drawers and shit i don't know if they was like in like a science lab or some shit like that i don't recall but she grabbed a knife up out of there. So they get to the cafeteria or whatever. Arthur come in with, with a whole motherfucking AK-47. And he like, yeah, bitch, I'm part of it too. And so she's like, oh my God, Arthur, are you fucking serious? You up in here shooting motherfuckers too? So Dan is on the ground. He done already been motherfucking shot. Dan over there mumbling and shit because he, you know, he got shot with a motherfucking AK-47. I can't believe he was even alive because that shit's crazy. So... Arthur hands Ani the gun and she's he's like this motherfucker that raped you so I know that you want to fucking shoot him and put his ass out of his misery who the fuck gonna know so he hands Ani the gun and Ani is like I really want to shoot the shit out of him I really do so she takes the gun and all of that shit and she's contemplating but at the end of the day she ain't built like that and I get it I get it so Arthur ends up snatching the gun from her and Arthur shoots the shit out of him. That's how he ended up being paralyzed because he didn't die, but he got paralyzed. So after that, it was almost like Arthur was disgusted with the fact that she didn't even want to kill him. And it was like Arthur was getting mad, like Arthur was finna kill Ani. So Ani pulled the knife out and stabbed the fuck out of Arthur, stabbed him in his motherfucking, oh girl, y'all, right here. Stabbed his ass, held that motherfucking in there, he fell to the ground, all that shit, and he died. He was looking at her hella confused because he's like, bitch, you gonna kill me, but you ain't gonna kill the motherfucker that raped you? It's giving coward. That's what he was thinking. That's how he was looking. So at this point, we can all surmise that Ani was not part of the shit. If anything, she helped this motherfucker out because what this is just like? 
four minutes. Don't do that. So, if anything, she was trying to help his ass out because Arthur was going to fuck around. She was saving herself because Arthur looked like he was about to shoot the shit out of her. So, Ani is a writer and all of this stuff for like some shit in New York, some like paper in New York or whatever. So she putting her stories in and stuff like that. She doing like little bullshit ass stories or whatever. And so her boss is like, well, you know what? You got into New York Times or some shit like that. And you know, you, you could get to, you get to move to New York. But her husband's like, bitch, we going to London. We finna, we finna hop on, hop on that motherfucking plane and do some intercontinental uh, type shit. Like, bitch, we're going out the country. We're finna move to London. Why you think you finna do some New York shit? You're not finna do no New York shit, bitch. We're going to London. So, she's like, okay, all of this shit is going on. So, the dude keep asking her, what's the dude's name? What is his name? Aaron. Aaron was like a reporter. So, Aaron was coming to her and Aaron was like, listen, Darren want to talk to you. What is his name, Darren? Dane, my bad. Dane want to confront you because Dane, Dane going around, Dane wrote a motherfucking book telling everybody that she was helped, she, that she wasn't a victim, that she helped with the motherfucking shooting and shit and she fucking didn't and he know that with his bullshit ass so Aaron was the one that was like you know I believe you Ani and I just want to interview you to let other people hear your story and stuff like that so at first she was like no 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 but then she finally sat down and told everybody everything that I'm telling y'all so she was going to continue with the interview and then Dane rolled his motherfucking ass in. Nobody asked him to be there. She went back to the school and everything. Like, talk about PTSD. She went back to the school to do the interview. Dane kind of rolling his ass out of motherfucking hall, but she like, bitch, this interview is over with. When I say it's over with, this interview is done. So, I need to leave out. So, Aaron going to chase the hand and talk about, you need to speak. You need to be the role model for all of the other women who's gone through this. She basically was like, man, fuck them other women. Them, them hoes gonna be okay because I'm not gonna go up here and get more PTSD. But hey, the shit, she told motherfuckers, she said, I, after I motherfucking uh, stabbed Arthur, I can't even hold a motherfucking knife in my hand without having flashbacks. Because in the beginning of the movie, somebody was trying to sell her some knives because she was doing a motherfucking thing. She was doing a bridal registry and they was telling her about the knives and the whole time she was holding knives, she was having a whole motherfucking flashback. I tried back because I had to delete some footage. So, I don't know where I left off at, but we're going to start from here. Now, the whole time her mama thing is, I'm going to put you in this private school so that when you get older, I'm going to put this private school is going to put you in places where you're going to be able to find a, success, a successful man for you to marry. Now, that shit worked because she found Luke. Luke was... Luke was wealthy. <clears throat> Luke came for money. Luke had that wealth wealth. So, um, so that part worked. So, I didn't grow up. She with the, with the, who, I don't know who she was writing for, but she was like writing for somebody, whatever. She was like, a publisher, writing a little bullshit ass stories like about orgasms and stuff like that. Like nothing to, to really be like yes and i do news articles about like no it wasn't like that they was just like okay she's a good writer she can write about this type of shit so all this shit came out about um dane basically trying to re-slander her name i think he done slander her name all of this time so she did the little interview all of this stuff i'm just recapping y'all so she did the little interview and all of that stuff so this whole time once she wants uh ani gets with luke her mama is basically just like there for the ride because she's like you know twas not for me you wouldn't even been put in this position to find you a wealthy man so i'm i'm i ain't getting off this train i'm not getting off this fucking train so ani was pretty much over because at the root of everything ani knew that the person who she was wasn't really the person who she was ani was a bit of a rebel she had a bit of a temper and she was a bit of a rebel. So they had a book sign and he, you know, he had a wheelchair and shit. So they had a book sign and Ani showed up to the book sign and they had a motherfucking library and shit. So she telling Dane, like, you know what, you bogus as hell. Basically, like, you bogus as hell for coming out and basically trying to re-slander me because you want to get some money from a fucking book. And you know you goddamn raped me. And he basically was like, okay, you know what? I know, I know what I did. And I but I can't, I can't talk about it because goddamn it. I wanted to get ahead of this story. I wanted to get ahead of everything. So yeah, I told motherfuckers that you was a part of it. He knew, he knew he was lying. This whole fucking time he knew he was lying. But again, Dan came for money, so when nobody really tripping on him, they was all just like, oh, the poor, the motherfucker poor white girl lying on Dane and shit because Dan is he's somebody. And so the poor white girl just wanna take advantage of him, or whatever. But that wasn't what the fuck it was. Dane's a goddamn monster. So 
they in a library and all of this shit. And so he's like, you know, Ani basically know the whole rundown. He about to say, this motherfucker like, oh, I got a wife. I got kids. You know, I can't come out with the true story and stuff like that. And then motherfucker literally told her, if you, t if you come out and tell motherfuckers I raped you, I'm going to lie. And then I'm going to tell them that you was actually, you was really a part of the shooting and stuff. I'm just going to double down on everything that I've been fucking saying. So I'm like, bitch, you got the nerve to sit in my face and you know you raped me and got the nerve to try to blackmail me and tell me that if I actually come out with the motherfucking story that you're going to tell motherfuckers that I, you going to double down on the bullshit you've been telling people, how you going to demonize my name all these motherfucking years and tell motherfuckers all this shit and the only people who really know the truth was Arthur and the goddamn teacher. Those are only two motherfuckers that know and the only two motherfuckers that believe me and you really about to double down on this shit. I've been running from this shit my whole goddamn life and you really finna double down and re-humiliate me with these motherfucking lies. So he's like, she's like, you can't even motherfucking say it. That's how much of a coward you are. He was like, okay, listen. Yeah, I raped you, but this information cannot get out because it's going to ruin me. Cause like, bitch, I got books and shit coming out. I'm, I'm making, I'm making my paper. I'm getting my shmoney off of this lie. So, bitch, you try to come out and say some shit, bitch. I'm finna throw your motherfucking ass under the bus. It is what the fuck it is because I'm looking out for me. I'm looking out for Dane. I'm not looking out for you, bitch. I'm looking out for me. So, honestly, the whole fucking time I'm watching this scene, I'm like, OMG, I hope this bitch is recording this because he is really spilling the beans on himself. And if she is really just doing this for self-gratification, that shit is crazy. Like, bitch, this is your time to shine. You, you, you motherfucker write newspaper articles. So, bitch, you should know how this works. Baby, she left up out of there. Dame's down there sell, uh, uh, signing them books. Ani pulled out her motherfucking ear, earbuds. She pulled out her motherfucking iPhone. Ani recorded the whole goddamn conversation. I said, bravo, bitch, because I just knew you didn't let this time pass. So, Ani went to her publisher, uh, her boss or whatever, and so she's like, I wrote a story. So Ani goes and writes a paper like she writes an article. She takes it to her boss and she's like, listen, I wrote this article. So her boss read it because she's like, I'm not going to New York. I'm just going to go to London with my fiance. Like we're going to be married. I'm just going to go and be wealthy with him. And I'm going to put all this shit behind me. But she wanted to like write a little bullshit ass article about it. Like a bullshit ass, excuse me, like a bullshit ass piece about it. So she gave it to her boss and her boss like, Bitch, what the fuck is this Trump? Like, what the fuck is this Trump up ass shit? Like, bitch, this ain't even this bedtime ass story, bitch. Like, this, if you want to talk about it, talk about it. She told her, write about this shit like nobody gonna read it. That's how, that's how the fuck you write. You don't write knowing that motherfucker gonna read it. You gonna write it like nobody's gonna read this shit. If you gonna talk about it, bitch, talk about it. Fucking talk about it. So she went back to the drawing board and Ani talked about it. Ani talked about it. Her boss called her up. So that's the bitch. New York Times picking up your shit, bitch. You finna, you finna get that paper. You finna get that motherfucker paper, bitch. So she like, Dane, let me talk to you. So she take Dane outside. She's telling Dane, she like, you know what? I did this. So she played the recording for Dane. And Dane like, bitch, I thought, I thought you was past this shit. I thought you was basically like, I thought you was past the right, bitch. I thought you weren't gonna talk about this shit no more, bitch. You embarrassing me. Let motherfuckers know I'm marrying a bitch that got raped. Like gang raped and shit on on three separate occasions in one motherfucking night. Like, bitch, you embarrassing me. I thought you weren't gonna talk about that shit no more. She like, nigga, you for real? And then like, bitch, I'm dead ass. I'm dead the fuck ass. Like, bitch, you, why would you put this shit out without talking to me first? Like, why would you put this motherfucking story out without talking to me first? So she's like, bitch, I know you. I know you fucking lying. After I had to build up all the motherfucking guts in the universe to actually put my story out, motherfucker, you over here chastising me, telling me you supposed to be over this shit. You, yo, your motherfucker, that you got raped in high school, bitch. You a grown ass woman. Why you still tripping on that? Not knowing or not even caring that I didn't got all motherfucking PTSD from this shit. He really just cared. He cared about his image. He didn't want his family to know that he was basically like with a girl that got raped, with a girl that went through the shit that she went through. And he's basically like, bitch, you're rehashing this shit and you're rude as fuck for that. So I need like. She like, motherfucker, listen, I ain't being fake no more. I've been fake with you. I've been fake with your bitch ass family. I've been fake with, with my mama. I've been fake with all of y'all motherfucking asses. When I told y'all what happened to me, everybody wanted to sweep that shit out of the rug. I need closure for myself. So yeah, I put the motherfucking story out. I did what the fuck I needed to do. And so he was tripping. And she like, motherfucker, you know what? Basically, she was like, bitch, it's over. I'm finna take this job in motherfucking New York. You, you take your motherfucking uh, long face ass to London. 
and do what the fuck you're gonna do. But you're not gonna be with me basically trying to make me feel bad about the fact that I finally got up enough courage to tell my motherfucking story. Fuck you and this motherfucking heirloom ring and this motherfucking wealth and my mama and your mama and this motherfucking beautiful ass palace with this beautiful ass garden. Because, baby, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. So she basically called the shit out. He's like, bitch, you really finna do this shit right now? She's like, bitch, I'm finna do this shit right now. Right now. You can take some motherfucking rain back, bitch. You crying, I'm crying, we crying together. But I'm done with your ass. So then they fast forward or whatever. So I basically like, bitch, I'm, I'm finna do me in motherfucking New York. So she basically broke up with Dane. She literally broke up with Dane. And she left all that shit behind and said, mama, fuck you. Because you ain't believe me no way, bitch. I'm finna go get this bag in motherfucking New York. So she went and she did that. She moved into a motherfucking apartment. Her friend was still by her side, 10 toes down. As fuck she should be. And Ani went and did her own motherfucking thing. So Ani walking down the street one day. This is the end part. This is really like a petty part. So a motherfucking bitch who fuck with Dane, like, dealt with Dane. Like, she, like, work with publishing or whatever. She's like, oh, I hope your 15 minutes of fame gets you noticed. So she's like, Dane did so much good work. And then you coming over here basically telling the truth on him, bitch. Because, you know, it's always a motherfucker who, regardless of what they did, regardless of what somebody did, they always still want to take their sides. Motherfuckers are goddamn rapists. He's a goddamn rapist. He better be glad he fucking survived that shooting and all his ass was motherfucking uh, paralyzed because his ass could have been D-E-A-D. -E okay? D-O-A. Like a lot of them other motherfuckers was. And in the end, she chose her. And I'm always all about choosing me. I said this was a good-ass movie. I wasn't even expecting this movie to be this good. It was a good-ass movie, y'all. It was 